Hey guys, welcome to game two between Tim and Sugo. Game one was a barn burner. Not the best observing on my part uh, because I ended up missing a really critical drop from Sugo, but Tim making a really good showing of it, showing how strong a Protoss player he, uh, he is. Sugo starting in the bottom right hand corner as the blue Protoss, Tim starting in the bottom left hand corner as the red Protoss. This is going to be on Vermeer. And really it was just a half second aggressive maneuver from Tim moving his reaver shuttles a little bit too far forward and a heads up maneuver from Sugo to pick off that shuttle that turned the game in Tim's favor. And it's really, really minor. That was basically half a second that ended up caught and that shows you how skilled both of these guys are. Actually, I want to toss it out. You had Arcane uh, Winds and Art of Turtle I'm trying to think if there are other New York participants that ended up going to the chat land in Chicago. And the, and just to give you guys an idea, out of the, the largest public land that was running, uh, the finals, I believe, was Arcade Wins. Well, I know, was Arcade Wins versus Arbiter Turtle. I won't spoil that. I will suggest going to uh, Arianox's Twitch channel. He might have the VODs up there. I'm not sure if he has a YouTube channel or not. He might. But you can go ahead and see the finals. Arbiter Turtle actually ended up off racing in the finals uh, versus Arcane Wins. But... I think it's part of the thing is, is it's just like, because they're, it's a challenging thing to highlight how skilled people are in Brood War. Ooh, double gate opener here by Sugo, by the way, this, and on a four player map as well. I wonder if he's going to send out an additional probe. And actually, I'm wondering if Tim is going to be signaled to this, recognizing that in game one, Sugo did not send out a probe scout. And unfortunately for Sugo, it looks like Tim is going to get first scout, but so hold back the uh, previous thing where I'm like, how do I even explain how good the players are at this? Honestly, I feel like it takes a good three years to be very, very skilled at Brood War to really where you're playing up to even current pro meta. Oh man, double gate on the opposite side from Tim as well. Although I think that second gateway was a little bit later. So finds the double gate. Initial Zealot gonna go chasing after that first probe. One Zealot blocking the ramp in the meantime, and Sugo, so both players opening up double gateway in the dark. Continuation zealots on both ends, so we'll see who ends up winning in a potential micro fight. Tim has a sliver more minerals because he sent that probe out a little bit later. I would not be shocked to see, yeah, it looks like we already have a uh, fourth and a fifth zealot queued by Sugo, which I was expecting after seeing that very, very early probe scout. Probed. Oh, Tim showed the second zealot, which is unfortunate. Small mistake there. He wanted to try. He was trying to back that second zealot off because he wanted to try to hide the fact that there were additional zealots on the ramp because that reveals that there's a two gate on the opposite side. Tim now returning with that probe via the gas being dropped. Still some additional zealots fanning out. Looks like the zealot's still going to hold the ramp. It looks like an earlier gas here from Tim, but this is going to be three and a probe versus three. Let's see if. Sugo can micro against this, gets one free shot, and the Zealot actually able to get through the, the area where he's able to sweep around, and all of a sudden, that probe gonna be a huge factor. Let's see if the Zealot actually splits off and just makes it, yeah, it's just gonna split off and try to make a dash for the probe line, potentially. And some amazing micro from Sugo, able to somehow open up two Zealots here, although one of them heavily damaged, and it looks like just to sneeze away from dying. So splitting right there, that's opening up the two additional Zealots to breach the ramp, and now things not looking the best for Tim. The Zealot dying to that probe to the north. The Zealot engaging with the probe line to try to keep this alive. Two Dragoons are producing, so there's not going to be... Now the question is, is how many probes die on this side? Tim unfortunately had a little bit of a rally. So additional probe, and every millisecond counts right here, additional probes dying for Tim. And Sugo trying to interrupt that gas because that was the one differential here and getting even more kills. So going to end up with the early game economic lead. Wow, still got how many probes died there? I should have kept a count. That was significant amount. But now we've got two Dragoons out. So a slight lead in that regard, range upgrading. If Suko can hold on and just produce enough troops for, and the problem is this is also high ground, so Tim's gonna have to, he's gotta punch through after that amount of damage that was inflicted there. 
So moving forward with four Dragoons, this is going to be four, potentially against four by the time they arrive. Might arrive just slightly earlier. But there's also going to be the misfire rate, so things not in Tim's favor. The other option he has is to just try to blockade that natural expansion, maybe try to go for a faster follow-up Nexus. So now moving his way down, getting some good damage on that Zealot, trying to do what he can. Is he still going to peel up the ramp? Looks like he's deciding not to. So yeah, his second relegated option here is maybe to continue to rally those Dragoons to the front and just go for a much earlier second Nexus and try to catch up in the pro count that way. He's already saved resources to drop that Nexus a lot more rapidly. Well ahead. Sugo in the meantime dropping that robotics facility. So nice recovery, potential recovery maneuver from Tim. Tim, yeah, now just going to rally those Dragoons, try to hold this area for as long as possible versus Sugo, and this is his method to try to sneak back into this. Unfortunately, it's very, very thin margins here because he's definitely at an economic deficit. And Sugo, I think, if he wants to play absolutely, and this is kind of the, the rock, paper, scissors of PvP, if he goes Observer first, he's going to end up in a little bit more of a detrimental situation that will allow Tim right back into it, although it looks like he's going to gate Observer as well. Just pausing. I think he just paused a little bit of Dragoon production, now seeding the natural expansion. Not sure if that was enough time. Sugo is going... He does have the resources to go ahead and grab an additional base. He's starting to fan out. And he's actually going to be able to move up and discover, okay, that you have a Nexus planting as well. Let's try to get... So you can guys see the time differential here. So the Nexus actually f just about finished as Sugo's Nexus is starting. That was a really good transfer here by Tim. So those probes should be able to saturate pretty well. A probe moving out to try to see what's going on. There's going to be... So a Zealot advantage in that initial fire going off on that pylon. Sugo just diving in, thinking he might have a troop advantage, but he doesn't, in fact. An additional probe dies right there. Every unit counts here for Tim, keep in mind, but Sugo, without the numbers advantage, now going to retreat, almost ended up losing an additional Dragoon on top of that. And now Tim has a window here where he can double produce these probes to try to close that worker deficit. Starting to work on that now, and because it was Observer first start from Sugo, respecting the Dark Templar counterplay, there's an opportunity for Tim to close that gap and maybe sneak back into this. Robotic Support Bay, as a follow-up, two additional gates for Sugo as well. We have a Robotic Support Bay on the opposite end, no additional gateways as of yet. However, we do have an initial shuttle being produced from Tim, which suggests he's going to be fairly aggressive here. The worker count has now evened for Tim. And supplies are actually just about, or very, very close. Sugo with a slight lead. Nice recovery from Tim overall. Sugo now going ahead and saturating. However, with the infrastructure a little bit ahead of Tim, I think there's going to be a good opportunity for Sugo to take an advantage in the follow-up. The Observer finding that shuttle is going to see this Reaver as it's produced and is also going to see the lack of gateways, and that should be a signal to Sugo that either he can go for an early third, it looks like he's positioning to maybe go for an early third, or he can opt to be more aggressive than his opponent. Right now, just producing Reaver that Zealot's initially blockading a little bit, but going to get the two Reavers out defensively. <clears throat> Play from there. Sugo again with just a sliver of a lead, some Dragoons hovering over that natural just in case there was a Reaver drop, now scooping up the Reavers. But that should be... A signal to Sugo, and this is this could be disastrous actually for Tim. The observer going to trail. Already in position on the lower spoke. Tim gonna have to back up. I think that was probably spotted, that shuttle coming across. This is without shuttle speed and all sorts of pylons in the way for Sugo. Anticipating this maneuver is gonna drop a zealot to go ahead and wipe out that probe. And Tim able to get position on that high ground and while Sugo's maybe a little bit distracted is potentially going to lose a Dragoon that's going to be really really close certainly weakening one of them trying to regather his Reavers are out of position actually these Reavers are a little bit exposed Tim backing up a little bit these Reavers have to be very very careful and now Tim all of a sudden has surged ahead in the worker lead he's going up the five gateways and 
impressive macro, actually going to drop six, and he's going to play Gateway Man to follow this up. So he wants to have a crushing amount of troops to follow things. So in, in two minutes here, or so, if Sugo doesn't plop down some, some sort of, it looks like he does have five gateways, some additional tech, Tim likely will end up with a superior worker lead. Tim actually, so preemptively dropping these gateways and moving up to grab a Nexus as well. Aggressive play. And starting to stage forward, he doesn't have the Observer control right this second. Looks like he is going to be able to pick off this Observer. Maybe? No, just kidding. Okay, now he is. Unfortunately, his army a little bit spread out. Engage Unfortunately for him, though, he's engaging where Sue was a bit spread out. So the Zealot's on spread, taking some damage, and it looks like the Reavers are boxed out behind this lower artifact. However, Tim might not have the raw troops to engage here, but the Reavers very isolated from this fight on Sugo's side of the map. Tim now exiting to the north. Is he going to be able to preserve his Reavers? One of them is lost, but the second able to scoop up into the shuttle. And Tim now exiting to the north. And Tim thinking about dropping an Exus. Doesn't look like he's going to pull that trigger though. However, all six gateways producing in a flurry. Set of Vadoon, Templar Archives dropping as well. Sugo maintaining the supply lead, but again behind on workers. It looks like he's evened up the amount of gateways. Maybe because he was able to get eyes with that observer interior to Tim's base. Oops, not what I wanted to do right there. <clears throat> but no Templar Archives as of yet. He does have Zelt leg speed constructing. Templar Archives can be that X factor in PvP. And Sugo now moving to that lower spoke, looking to see if he can get a solid engagement, maybe feeling he's got that stronger Reaver count, and he does. He's still got that plus one Reaver. If he can just find the right engagement angle, the Observer gets picked off immediately, sees an inferior army, so going to charge into this. The Reaver not yet unloaded for Tim, now unloading. The Reavers, however, unloading to the north as well. The Zealots creating a good amount of disruption on the Dragoon lines. And the Reavers actually getting some nice carving shots to the south as well. So Tim with a decent defensive engagement right there. Still is able to take out that shuttle. Looks like that Reaver's still going to be able to wipe things out. But the reinforcements from Sugo going to charge in. And now he's got a superior army on the ground. Reaver has rebuilt some scarabs. But Sugo at the close reinforcement points. Not going to feel confident enough to engage this. The Observer in the meantime for Tim checking out the saturation there at the natural. He's still sitting on that 44 workers. And the DT is now for Tim able to sneak up and going to be able to pick off that Reaver. And we have, this was the similar problem in game one. Do we have, we have no observers. So this observer are going to confirm no observers in the natural expansion. There's a bit of a gap here. It looks just now getting plugged, but this was that weak Dragoon from earlier. And Tim engaging as well with the Dragoons he has to try to create a scatter force as they're trying to back up to get into that natural expansion so the Dark Templar can get on top of the probes. The Observer able to sneak down. Some nice blockading by Sugo, but Tim able to force some boxing in of those troops so those Reavers able to get a lot of damage done. However, he's at an inferior troop count, so loses a Reaver right there and is now going to have to back up. He does have the supply lead, however. That is in workers, though. And able to get... I think actually a little bit of economic disruption just by Sugo f flushing those troops in. So now moving up to that lower spoke. Tim now with that supply lead. Pylons being planted from Sugo to the north. It looks like he's going to check the probe situation out at the 3 o'clock. Moving a probe of his own. Or sorry, to the 9 o'clock. He's going to send out a probe of his own to the 3 o'clock as well. The observer is nearby to sidle up to go ahead and check whether that base is grabbed or not. And this should be... A nice pylon blockade there by Sugo. A couple zealots being pressed up. And I keep in mind these zealots are pulled away from the main army. And so it is an opportunity for Sugo to press forward. And Tim actually being the aggressor here. Saying, okay, maybe you're going to attack forward in a movement. And unfortunately, Sugo wasn't being aggressive right there. So ends up losing a couple free troops. But the zealots able to clear things out, at least to the north. Sugo going to end up with the earlier nexus at the 3 o'clock. And Tim regathering on that lower spoke. Sugo starting to press forward. The Reavers are not unloaded out of this shuttle. Would be a Reaver. Oh, and the shuttle gets picked off with a Reaver and a Zealot inside. 
Nice play there from Sugo, and it's going to be a little bit of a battle over the lower spoke. Tim currently, with the worker lead and the supply lead, I think his army is just about equivalent, though. It's out league speed on both ends. Psystorm just finishing, but Templar not yet out on the field. That's a big shift in momentum in Tim's favor, especially against just pure Dragoon. Looks like some High Templar are being constructed on the opposite end. I'm not sure whether si I might have missed Psystorm upgrade on the opposite side. Dark Templar trying to sneak in, able to escape with his life. The Zealots looking for some opportunity to disrupt, but Sugo in the meantime has been able to funnel out some troops all the way around. There's only a single cannon, it looks like some other cannons warping in, but a few troops to defend. Sugo is going to find that Nexus as it warps in and going to force some troops back. Now let's see if he moves into the area that Tim is, he's pulling all of his troops back. Let's see if he's able to move into the area that's vacated or if he just holds position currently. It looks like he's just holding. Able to do a little bit of disruption there at the nine o'clock location, but not so much that I think he's gonna end up with an advantage. Plus one weapon's also gonna finish for Tim a little bit earlier here. Sa base is saturating just about at the same moment. Eight worker lead here for Tim which I think puts the armies just about even. Tim's army a little bit more spread out as it's moving up to engage that three o'clock base. The Reaver is stranded, doesn't have a shuttle to support. And a High Templar is stranded right there as well, though it might be able to levy a pretty strong Psy Storm in combination here. Beautiful Psy Storm as Tim is also engaging from the north. It looks like some Archons engaging the Dragoons, but unfortunately Tim is disrupted such that he can't do the stutter shot you would want against those Archons. And it looks like it's kind of a rough shot engagement on two fronts. The Archon being backed up, some addition, that Psy Storm being the big difference here, where two Psy Storms, and I think additional Psy Storms, might have been dropped for Tim. And Sugo doesn't have the Psy Storm to respond, so gonna GG right there as his army melted. And Tim, with the turnaround, able to take game two. Beautiful recovery. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Gonna move on to game three in just a moment. Thanks for listening.